Welcome in to a daily editorial here on the KE Report. In this daily editorial, Jordan Royburn, the founder and editor of The Daily Gold, and I will be focusing on GDX and the monthly close for gold and some of the other precious metals. First, let's focus on GDX, Jordan, because you've made some interesting comments to me and to your subscribers in a couple recent updates that you sent out over the last couple days. One thing that you were talking to me is that now is the time to to be careful and truly read the price action. Don't spend too much time focusing on, let's say, these oversold conditions and sentiment being very low because from a short-term time basis, yes, we're seeing GDX in an oversold position, but that's really just on a short-term basis. Can you address this point first? Sure, yeah. Uh, There's a a couple things to uh, unpack there, Corey. Um, Yeah, I mean, the, the... Big picture looking at GDX, and we could say the same for GDXJ, is they're not that oversold beyond just the last several weeks. I mean, aside, aside from the last several weeks, they've really gone almost sideways for 18 months. Now, I know if you look at the Huey, it's interesting because there's these different indices for gold stocks. If you look at the Huey, that is more oversold. That doesn't have the strong stocks in it that GDX has. Um, if you look at uh, the Dow Jones U.S. Gold Mining Index, which I think has a heavy weighting in, I want to say, like a handful of companies, and I think a couple of those are pretty strong. I mean, that index is starting to roll over. That index has been really strong. So there's uh, a number of different indices you can look at, um, which are showing different things. None, none of them bullish for the sector. But that being said, getting back to GDX, it's trading at 2118 as we're recording. It's very close to that support at 2100. Uh, predictably, I mean, it is, uh, like I said, it is very oversold, but only in the very short term. So a bounce from around 2100 is pretty likely. Um, now, what kind of bounce we will get remains to be seen. I am not that optimistic that we're going to see a big, massive bounce here. Um, I, I think we could see a weak bounce, maybe a bounce in a consolidation for a little while. But um, I like what you said about focusing on price, because sometimes with technical analysis, anal- I mean, I was going to say amateurs, but even professional analysts, sometimes they focus on indicators way too much and they don't look at price. And you have to be really careful in this kind of market, because if you look at the Huey, it's broken down from a little decent triangle pattern. Um, I don't know what it's doing today, but it's very, very close to its December 2016 low. And if it loses that, it could have a waterfall decline uh, lower. And for GDX, we could say the same thing if it loses 2100. I mean, that could be a very significant breakdown. But again, I think it's probably more likely that it's going to bounce and or at least go sideways there for a couple weeks. But... With respect to oscillators and oversold indicators, um, when you're in a trending market, those things can hit extremes more often than you think. So when you're in a downtrend and you're in a a bear market, those things can get much more oversold than you would ordinarily see. And it's just something that we have to be very careful about because if if the price is not confirming what your indicator says, then that that's a scenario where the market can have an accelerated decline. Like when we see these big, when you look, if you look at GDX just over the last five or 10 years, and most of these big severe declines happen when the market was already very oversold. Now, I'm, I'm not saying we're going to see this serious decline and GDX is going to blow through 2100 to the downside immediately. But, I mean, that, that is a possibility, e- even after we get a bounce for a couple weeks or a month. That, that is a possibility and something to keep in mind. Because, look, in, in strongly trending markets, it, it's the same way when you're in a bull market and the market moves to the upside really aggressively. And then you're looking at your indicators, which say this is really overbought, but the price hasn't corrected yet. The, the price can keep going higher and higher. I mean, these, these moves can become even more extreme. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, 
we are, I mean, if you look at the Huey, we're seeing oh, oh, uh, severe oversold conditions there. But like I said, there's a technical breakdown. So the price action there is very concerning because there's been a breakdown. And I, I don't see that uh, a huge amount of room there for some big sustained rebound. And, and even the same can be said with GDX, even after it tests 2100. So, you know, I hope that I explained that well enough. I mean, just s simply put, um, focus as much as you can on the price. Look at the support and resistance points and other things, other indicators should really be secondary right now. Uh, this, this is a time to focus uh, increasingly on the price action itself. Yeah, I think in summary, one thing to consider here is that a lot of the bullish comments that are coming out of precious metals analysts are because the market is oversold and sentiment is low. One thing to consider about true bull markets that are running is that they don't really ever get to oversold positions. Usually they stay at overbought levels with sentiment too high and people keep on saying, whoa, well, this just can't continue. It can't keep going higher and they keep going higher on the downside. And we're not saying that gold is, say, in a true bear market, but as you have oversold conditions and low sentiment and the price hasn't rebounded, I feel like we've been talking about these low sent sentiment levels for three weeks now. We still haven't gotten a rebound so it is one of those that don't necessarily just depend on sent sentiment levels and oversold conditions as the technical indicators. Kind of what you're saying, let's see a bounce, let's see some sustained upward moves and better sentiment. That's a better market to invest in. Yeah, and, and one thing with sentiment indicators, we have to separate um, the miners from the metals. Now, cause I'm more positive on gold. I know we're going to talk about the monthly charts later, but if you look at the, the gold's very oversold, it has very strong support in the low 1200. So I think that's why it's holding up, although the rally so far hasn't really been anything to write home about. Uh, but looking at the sentiment for gold, I think we talked about this a week ago, but with respect to the COT, the net speculative position at the end of 2015, when gold hit $1,040 an ounce and that significant bottom the net spec position was 0.1%. You basically had zero speculation in the market. Now, as of the last reading, it was 13%. So looking at the overall net speculative position, it's really not yet close to where it was at that extreme. And we talked about it in the last week or two, Corey, how if gold is in a downtrend, for the net speculative position, for it to reach extremes, I mean, for me, it really has to be below 15%. If it's in a downtrend, I mean, it was at 20 percent for weeks and weeks and gold wasn't, you know, it, it kept drifting lower. It didn't put in a bottom at that point. Now, uh, the other on the other side, if gold were trending higher and, um, you know, breaking resistance levels, the net speculative position could be a lot higher. And then your your extreme reading when the market's in an uptrend. I mean, for me, looking historically over the last 15, 17 years, it's really in the 25% the area around around there. So that just gives you a great example of of how these, uh, these uh, extreme readings, how they can change based on the market's trend. And now that gold has, has broken support levels and it's trending down, we have to see the net speculative position. I mean, I, I do think gold, I do think the low, the low 1200s is going to hold for the next couple months here. But again, I mean, if you go back a month or so, the net spec position was around 20% or above 20%. That wasn't extreme enough on the downside. You really need to see below 15% or even below 10% in some cases for the market to get uh, a strong rebound when the larger trend is down. So I, I hope uh, I clarified this uh, well enough for the listeners. Okay, Jordan, I think you did. But let's also talk about kind of the overall breadth within GDX. We have talked before that GDX was being led by a select number of stocks and even technically held up by a select number of stocks. When you consider that overall people are saying, you know, we're due for an oversold bounce, you can't expect these leaders to be getting that bounce. And even now, some of them are starting to sell off. Maybe some investors taking some profits and rotating money either within the sector or outside of the sector. 
How does this impact your assessment of GDX when you understand that it was being held up and some of the recent gains when we were getting them a couple months back were thanks to, again, only a select number of stocks? Yeah, Corey, this is important. Now, to go back what we were talking about several weeks ago or a month ago, a lot of investors and traders were getting excited because GDX was outperforming gold. I think it hit a three or a four month high at one point. However, the problem is that was not confirmed by breadth. That was not confirmed by the same positive divergence in the GDX advanced decline line, uh, which was not doing much. And even, you know, I'm looking at it right now, and this is delayed data, and it's it's not that um, it's not that concerning right here in the immediate sense. So I mean, that's another reason I think GDX is probably going to hold above 21 uh, over the next couple weeks. Um, but with that said, the issue now, and this is one reason I'm skeptical that we're going to see this big rebound in the miners, GDX has been held up by about 35% of the index, which has been very, very strong. Like those charts have been basically in a bull market. And so that held GDX up over the last several months when it should have been declining with gold. So the problem now that the, the, the set, you know, the, the, in a very short term sense, the miners are oversold, they should bounce. But when you look at GDX, 35% of the index is really not that oversold. So it's in a different, it's in a different condition. You know, the 65% of the index, if that's really oversold on a short term basis, sure, that's going to bounce. But what about the other 35% that has held up really well in recent months and has been in a bull market, you know, up until now? I mean, that, that segment of the index is not going to get the same oversold bounce because it's not oversold. It's been trending favorably. And, you know, another indication of that is I, I in my subscriber update, I charted the Dow Jones U.S. Gold Mining Index. And, you know, I'm not exactly certain of the construction of the index, but I do think there's a handful of companies that make up 70 percent or 80 percent of the index. But looking at the chart of that index, it's been fairly strong. It's been trending higher. However, what just happened in the last several weeks is for the first time in a while, that index lost its 200 day moving average. And in the last couple of weeks, it tried to recapture it, but it failed at it every time. And now it's kind of rolling over. So that's that's another concern for me that even the strong parts of the, the uh, minor, the, the mining sector it looks to be like their strength is kind of coming to an end. So again, th this is a reason why I don't think we're going to see a big rebound in GDX as far as the price. Now, last thing here, Corey, a lot of these moves are a function between price and time. So you can get a rebound where the price doesn't rally that much, but it just goes sideways for like a month or so. And that's how the oversold condition is alleviated. So these these uh, moves can be a function between price and time. And sometimes you don't get much in terms of price, but a lot in terms of time. You know, sometimes you get a lot in price, but it doesn't really last that long. So it's important to keep that in mind. Yeah, it can be very scary when you are in an oversold condition and the price doesn't rally. It just kind of buys its time and lets that oversold condition level out because then the next downward move comes from, of course, a lower level. Let's now talk about the actual gold price on a monthly basis because we did have that rollover of the monthly chart and well quite frankly that month was not a good one for gold it was below that 50 month moving average that i'm watching trending towards that lower bollinger band what do you have to say that monthly close obviously not good but what does it mean in the big picture well i i would disagree with you slightly i mean the monthly close at 12 34 yesterday it is um forming a, it formed a bit of a bullish hammer, but uh, time will tell. I don't think it was that bad of a monthly close. The key is it traded as low as 12.10. And if you go back over the last couple years, um, there's support around 1,200 to 12.10, maybe even a little bit, you know, 1,195-ish to 12.10. But when you have a level like that that stands out on a monthly chart, it's, it's more significant than if it's on a weekly or daily chart. So the fact that gold 
was able to bounce from that area that that area has held in the past that gold is oversold. I mean, gold is a lot more oversold than the gold stocks. So putting all those factors together, that makes me confident that gold is not going to break below 1200, you know, maybe at the end of September or, you know, if not, then sometime in October. So over the next two months, I'm reasonably confident that gold, this low in gold is going to hold. But again, Corey, we just talked about, you know, you don't get, maybe you don't get much of a rally in terms of price, but it, it, it takes a lot of time. It buys its time until the next uh, move lower. And I, I see resistance at 1260. And then there's, there's a confluence of strong resistance at 1274. I know gold is down a little bit today, but even after yesterday, it closed the month at 1234. Even if it were to go to 1270 or the low 1270s, that's only like 3% upside. That's not a huge amount of upside. I mean, I, I'm less bearish on gold than the gold stocks, but this could be a situation over the weeks ahead where gold slowly grinds higher uh, and, and it's not too pretty of a move. And even that's been the case the last couple of weeks where since it made this low at 1210, it has moved higher, but it's kind of grinded back and forth most days and it hasn't been a pretty move higher. Uh, I think that that's something that uh, it's very possible that could continue uh, here uh, until the end of the summer. Okay, so overall, in summary, a bit more negative on the actual stocks. Gold, you think, could hold in and around this level, maybe just a little bit lower, but there is a lot of resistance, not that far above where the current price is. And yes, it is due for a bounce, but if we don't get that bounce or if that bounce is weak, then you do need to be concerned moving forward. And overall, there needs to be some much more positive price action for the metals moving higher to get a bullish sentiment, to get more of a bull market mentality back into this sector right now. It's just not there. And yes, you know what? We are over summer, but that doesn't mean that we can't be having a more constructive chart. And hey, we'll we'll follow up with you, Jordan. Always great comments. But yeah, we don't want to be too negative here. But you are pointing to the charts and what they are telling you. And they're speaking a lot to just how weak this market is. Jordan, great chatting with you. Thanks for taking some time and have a great rest of your week.